uh, great, great stuff, really interesting start to the day. Next up, we've got uh, Nicholas Manluccia from Questus, who's gonna take us through the horrors of virtual reality marketing. That sounds like a terrifying ride. So thank you, Nick, welcome. So good morning. I am really excited to be here talking about virtual reality, um, and more specifically, marketing in virtual reality. Now, the first question in your mind is probably like, should we bother? You know, is this VR kind of gimmicky? Is it just going to be a fad? And I think those are all fair questions. But on the contrary, I think virtual reality is poised to become one of the most prominent and powerful mediums that we've ever seen. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to try to do three things. I'm going to give an overview of the current state of virtual reality. I'm going to speculate on where it's likely to go in the next uh, 10 years or so. I'm going to provide a couple guidelines for just how we should be thinking about virtual reality content creation. So let's start with a few figures that just illustrate the potential of virtual reality. Here we've got 38.8 million. It's the estimated number of virtual reality headsets sold by 2018. $80 billion. It's the projected valuation of the VR market by 2025. 5.6 seconds. It's the average amount of time it takes for someone to ask about porn after putting on a VR headset for the first time. <laughs> no, I totally made that up. That's what most of my friends seem to ask. I'm not really sure what that says about the company I keep. <laughs> um, but even looking beyond the numbers, so like just look at the headlines, and you see a very clear growth trajectory. You've got the Samsung Gear VR released last November. It's the smartphone power headset that you actually saw demoed at breakfast this morning. And I think there's more demos coming at lunch. Um, but it's sold out very, very rapidly. The same exact story with Facebook and their Oculus Rift. They started taking pre-orders during CES. It sold out within minutes. So lots of cool things happening on the hardware front. You've also got um, HTC and Sony uh, coming out with products in the summer, uh, as well as Google and Apple. Google just announced they've got an entire business unit dedicated exclusively to virtual reality. Apple, on the other hand, been surprisingly quiet on the whole topic. AR versus VR, uh, until about a month ago, they were announced that they were hiring one of the foremost experts in virtual and augmented reality interfaces. So definitely expect something from them in the near future. Then you look at what brands are doing and how they're using it. You've got these agencies, big agencies, like BBDO and Huge, doing these VR crash courses, really just getting the technology into their employees' hands, letting them see what it's capable of. You've also got um, really great content from New York Times in partnership with GE Google. Um, they shipped a million plus Google Cardboards to their subscribers um, in a, you know, an effort to promote their new content. And uh, the way that GE and Mini integrated was brilliant. And you'll actually see a bit of that later. And so that's kind of where we're at with virtual reality now. It's a lot of really great content marketing. Um, the brands you see behind me all have at least some kind of uh, VR content piece. It's really interesting. That's the current state of, of VR. But then we got to start thinking about where it's going in the future. And to me, there's going to be this inevitable shift to paid advertising in virtual reality, right? And I think one of the roundtable discussions we had yesterday teased this up really nicely. You know, we talked about how Facebook's organic reach has just been plummeting. You know, and it's really more of a paid-to-play model now. And that's actually not unique to Facebook. If you just take like a standard adoption curve when it comes to any content platform follows the same pattern of uh, content monetization. You've got the innovators initially, and there are no ads whatsoever, right? <laughs> then once you start seeing the early adopters creep in, there's some forward-thinking, more progressive brands that put out these content marketing pieces. And once the early majority joins the party, you've got this gradual introduction of paid advertising. And then finally, when you've got the late majority and the laggards, that's when you see more of a full-on paid model, like, say, Facebook, maybe YouTube. Um, so when is, uh, you know, to me, it's not a matter of if this is going to happen, but it's a matter of when. Um, and if you take Mark Zuckerberg's word for it, it's right around the scale of about 50 to 100 million VR units sold is when, uh, you know, it starts to become interesting as a business in terms of developing out the ecosystem, which if you read between the lines, it's like when he can start making a crap ton of money on ad revenue. <laughs> but so how far off are we? Um, Goldman Sachs released a report just last month, or maybe a few weeks ago even, that um, had a couple projections. And if you take their base case, it's right around 2024 when we really start to see that volume uh, of headsets out in the market and when I think the content um, you know, platform is really going to ex start exploding. Um, but it starts now. And so there's going to be a ton of money pouring into virtual reality, some of which is going to be ad dollars. We have to be careful 
about how we build advertising into virtual reality. You guys remember these awful pop-up ads from like the late 90s? Like horrifying, right? To me, what I worry is that when advertising becomes more integrated into virtual reality, moves away from those more content plays to a pure paid model, is that we start just imprisoning consumers with this type of crap, you know? And they're constantly surrounded. Uh, and it could be truly terrible, and it could ruin the medium. Um, so we have to be really mindful in terms of how we're uh, introducing advertising and figure out a way to create sort of a sustainable ad revenue model. Because what happens every time a user experience becomes too saturated with ads like these? South Park said it much, much better than I could. But you see a reactionary um, offerings from entrepreneurs, from consumers. You, know, you had pop-up blockers. Uh, you saw DVR. And just a couple months ago, the same thing happened with mobile, right? You had these mobile ad blockers appearing here, there, and everywhere threatened to upend the entire mobile advertising industry. So that's kind of where we're at now. But I wanted to shift. Like, hopefully you're sold, at least on the potential of VR, and want to start exploring. So a couple guidelines for just creating quality virtual reality content marketing. The very first one is to capitalize on presence. Cool, got it, presence. But what is presence, right? Um, it's actually not a new concept. So academics have been talking about presence for the better part of a decade. Um, their definition is like eight paragraphs long, though, and didn't fit on a single slide. In sum and substance, though, presence is just the illusion of experiencing something that's generated by technology, as if that thing were real. Or alternatively, it's being in a space and forgetting that it's not a real space, but a virtual one. It comes courtesy of uh, Palmer Luckey, the founder of Oculus. And so North Face released a clip that does a great job of capitalizing on this sense of presence. Um, it's a sizzle reel of rock climbing and base jumping. And uh, this is actually the very first branded piece of VR content that I saw. And it's the one that turned me into a true VR evangelist. And I can tell you the exact scene that did it, too. You've got these two athletes at the very top of a cliff, and they're strapping on their backpacks and parachutes. And they take a bit of a running start, and they just hurl themselves off this cliff. Now, it's all being filmed with a drone, though. So the drone follows them as they go over the edge. And you're looking straight down, and there is nothing beneath you. And it's such a convincing illusion that when I looked down, I panicked for a second. I got like a little bit of vertigo. And while it was terrifying, it was also super exciting and illustrative of the power of this medium. Another great example of using presence, or where I think it gets really interesting, is when you start taking people to places that wouldn't otherwise be possible in real life. Uh, there's some great 3D photos out there that you can just kind of get lost in. Beautiful, beautiful art direction. Um, and to me, that's uh, where presence, I think, becomes most fascinating. It's just do the, uh, do the impossible, essentially. Um, it doesn't have to be anything trippy and psychedelic like floating cities that you just saw. It could just be somewhere evocative and kind of atmospheric. You know, that's the best way to use presence. Patron did a really good job of doing a tour of their distillery in their fields. And it wasn't anything more than that. It was a, you know, it was a distillery tour. But the way they shot it was really, really beautiful, really well done. Next thing to think about is don't rely on novelty. Use virtual reality to tell a true story. Um, you know, and it's, it's really easy without that sort of narrative structure to kind of fall back on VR gimmicks. Uh, and there's an easy litmus test, too, in terms of knowing whether or not you're relying too much on the novelty of the medium. You just have to ask, like, would this experience, would this content still be compelling if it wasn't in VR? And so Mini does a great job of doing exactly this. I mean, their whole piece was ultimately to promote their cars, but it was told around the story of a heist gone awry. So really well done. Likewise with Star Wars, they released a series of VR messages in the weeks leading up to the new film. Um, and the goal of these messages was really just to introduce the new characters and the settings that people would see in the movies. Um, but it was sort of framed with this you know, kind of loose narrative that, that propelled it along. And as much as we throw storytelling around, this, falls into buzzword territory uh, occasionally, but there's actually really good evidence um, that shows if you can immerse people into a story, their beliefs shift ever so slightly to become more consistent with that story. And when they're immersed in that story, when they're transported, they actually evaluate the protagonist of the story more favorably than they would otherwise. And this is all like academic literature. And what's fascinating is it was published about 15 years ago, uh, long before VR got any sort of mainstream tra traction. And the way they transported people into these stories was just having them read stuff. So you can imagine the effects of that transportation being so much more pronounced than a medium like virtual reality that's as immersive as it is. Next is to use virtual reality to its full extent, right? Um, has anyone ever walked out of a 3D movie and been like, why did I pay almost twice as much for the ticket? And the 3D effects are just woefully underwhelming. 
Uh, that happens to me all the time. Like when I go to a 3D movie, I don't want to feel like I'm just looking through a window, right? Like I want to see stuff flying out of my face. Uh, and it's not because I particularly like, you know, spears or javelins flying toward my eyes, but it's because I want to feel the full capability of that medium. Same exact thing with virtual reality. You've got binaural audio, you've got 360, degree, uh, 360 degrees of screen real estate, you've got 3D effects. If you're not using those in your VR pieces, why are you bothering with virtual reality at all? And it goes beyond just tech, right? It also applies to content. This was a piece uh, by Jurassic World, and it started off really interesting. You know, it's this uh, apatosaurus in a forest clearing, and there's a true sense of scale. It's very impressive. I mean, this thing is just towering over you to begin with. It's making these kind of guttural dino noises, uh, and about a minute passes, and it's still just kind of hanging out. And in the back of my mind, I'm wondering, like, when is a T-Rex just going to come charging through the tree line and tear this thing to shreds? Much to my chagrin, it never does. The apatosaurus just kind of looks at you for the better part of two minutes. Um, and it was cool, but it was ultimately like a missed opportunity in my mind, you know, to really, if Jurassic Park is known for anything, it's for its like visceral dinosaur carnage. So to see anything less than that was just going to fall flat for me. Now contrast that with something like Marvel. Marvel released a piece not long ago to promote their new Avengers movie. And this piece was super compelling. It starts in the middle of Manhattan, dead of night, and you see a reflection of Iron Man in this window, right? And you look around, and as you look around, you see the reflection of Iron Man's head turning with you. And you realize in that moment that you are Iron Man. There's definitely a Black Sabbath pun there, but it's just too obvious. <laughs> um, but then the shoulder missiles start popping up, and like your wrist-mounted rockets fly open, and you know something is about to go down. And what follows is this really cool scene where you and three other Avengers just kick the crap out of these robots that are attacking this tower. Um, and it's a super immersive experience. And one thing that caught my attention about it is how they, uh, how they showed it. They actually slowed it down to like alarmingly slow motion. Um, and it was really cool because it gave you the opportunity to appreciate all the details that went into creating it. And it also probably stretched their production dollars a bit further. <laughs> Um, but yeah, incredibly compelling, got me super excited for the movie, and because there was so much crammed into it, I watched it multiple times. Next thing to remember is that any brand can use virtual reality. Like, it's really tempting to just think VR is for sort of the marvels of the world, or like the Red Bulls, the really like action-oriented, you know, high adrenaline brands. But already you're seeing brands like GE tell these really smart and nuanced stories in VR. This one was excellent, we mentioned it yesterday all about the influence of uh, nature on industrial design. Again, beautiful creative direction, fascinating message. Then you've got Jim Beam, kind of an unlikely candidate, but they did this whole VR experience where they were actually brewing or distilling users into the liquor, like from the first person perspective of the liquor. A Little gimmicky, but I liked it. Um, it was an event marketing only thing, so when people took the headset off, there was actually a shot of the Devil's Cut whiskey waiting for them to try. Then you've got Borson. That's right, Borson. There's a processed cheese company that beat you to market in virtual reality. Um, but no, it was a really fascinating experience. It was this virtual reality roller coaster ride through a fridge that was filled with produce and obviously Borson products. Last but not least, in terms of things to consider, is to really think lean. Um, this has to be the topic on everyone's mind. You know, you see all this cool stuff, and it's just like the dollar signs start flying. Uh, VR can be expensive. Um, about 1.5 times as much in terms of pre-production is the figure I've seen, uh, about twice as much in terms of shooting, and post gets really, really expensive, up to 10 times as much as standard digital video. Um, so think shorter experiences, and don't be constrained to just videos. You saw one of the 3D pictures a bit earlier. To me, those are some of the most compelling experiences that I've had in VR, just locked in a dark room with a headset on, like spinning around in this office chair, uh, enjoying these beautiful 3D photos. Um, and it's interesting to see where they go. Like, you sort of see this, this creative convention emerging, like storytelling in 90 degree increments through these photos. That, like, as you rotate clockwise, there's a story that unfolds and you realize it's not just a whimsical island in the sky, there's whale rides going through the whimsical island in the sky. Um, but these, yeah, these photos are to me just absolutely incredible and sort of illustrative of where the medium can go in the next couple years. Um, this is a fascinating anatomical uh, 3D photo that to me got me thinking how virtual reality could be used for educational purposes and ultimately what that uh, interface might look like. And so those are the things, things to bear in mind um, as you go through VR. And I'll close on probably my best piece of advice, which is to just go experience virtual reality if you haven't already. I mean, it'll be there at lunch. 
uh, take advantage of it and really start considering how your brand could use it you know, creatively and interestingly. Um, I firmly believe that we as marketers can be the authors of truly incredible experiences in virtual reality. So get out there, grab a headset, go explore. Let your imagination run wild. Because in my view, imagination is going to be the fuel that propels brands to success in VR. Thank you.